This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to grow your beautiful online presence and run your business. And I am a Squarespace user. Yes, my blog, TomWard.com, is a Squarespace site. And I chose Squarespace because it was so simple to build a site. I had no experience whatsoever, and they made it so easy. Actually, head over to Squarespace.com and start your free trial. You don't even need a credit card, and you can actually build your site. They give great examples to follow and great templates, too. I also love how their sites look. and They make it so easy when they're doing something simple like written word or pictures or getting more into video and audio like I do, they'll make your site look amazing. And they also have great analytics. They give you the data you need to run your site. So head over to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Tom Ward to receive 10% off your order. Thanks, guys. Yo, what's up, everyone? Uh, it's Griffin here. I just sat down uh, with Tom and we kind of discussed all of, all of my past. Might get a little boring in there, but uh, don't worry. We did cover uh, the toes and, you know, Noah and Dixie and I and um, the whole nine yards. So if you guys are listening to this, it's uh, it's about to get interesting. So sit down and I might be able to teach you a thing or two. Hey guys, welcome to the Tom Ward Show where I interview the biggest influencers in the world. Go check out my old videos. I've done Addison, Avani, all the Sway guys, Bryce. So check them out. If you like them, please subscribe. And today we've got Griffin Johnson. Griffin, I'm looking at my notes here. Griffin Johnson, TikToker, YouTuber, podcaster, investor, student, and possible professional athlete. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just trying to grow my portfolio out here and and venture off into about anything I can. So I appreciate the uh, the kind words. I don't know about biggest influencer in the world, but <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's Charlie. We gotta give we gotta give Charlie her props. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe maybe one day I'll be uh, in up in the top tiers. But you know, I'm just out here doing my thing, and I kind of just decided. Well, if I um, you know, I, I can't be the biggest influencer, then I guess I'll just, um, you know, be the influencer with the most things I'm involved in. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are, you and Josh are battling for like the most shit and Bryce too. I mean, you guys are got so much going on. Yeah, dude, me and Josh, we, um, I would honestly, I never even thought about it, but I guess we, uh, I guess low key kind of have a subconscious competition, like a good one, not like a toxic i don't really think about it but you know i like having josh um working on all this stuff with me because it kind of keeps both of us working back and forth so well dude thanks for hopping on it took i didn't even think of interviewing you <laughs> we've been doing the podcast we've been talking about it for about three months and it just dawned on me I'm like why don't i interview griffin and then i'm like why haven't i asked him it's because everybody asked you for shit you know what I mean? Like everyone asks you, hey, can you follow me? Can you tag me? And I'm guilty of this too. Hey, Griff, can you tag me in this post? Can you retweet me? And I hate doing that shit because now I know you a little bit. I know you're getting that all day from everybody. Is that pretty much the case? Um, I would say, especially now, it's a lot different because, um, you know, getting into business and investments and making those relationships, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of adults either – they don't understand or like they don't know exactly what it means to do that. Do that. Uh, like to, for me to like repost someone or, you know, um, tag them or whatever it like, you know, it's a pretty nice gesture I would say uh, with the eyeballs and just putting it on your account. Cause my fans don't, they don't really care about business yet, which I'm trying to slowly like show them how cool, um, investing and being smart with your money and just education in general can be. So yeah, I get it. I get it quite a bit and out of kindness, like and not, not understanding that because I think a lot of people are trying to necessarily like use me or whatever. Of course that's kids. Number one. I mean, they've done like surveys. That's kids. Number one um, 
job that they want is influencer. Like everyone wants to be a YouTuber. Everybody wants to be an influencer. So yeah, I mean, they're going to latch on. Oh shit, Griffin's here. Yo, can you tag me? Can you repost this? I mean, but I was, I've seen that happen. Your roommate, uh, Noah, I, I always post clips on my TikTok of interviews, like little short ones under a minute. Go check it out, Tom Ward Official, if you guys want to see him. But I posted one from my Larray um, interview where he talked about right. having his back. You saw that. Noah did a duet, and I'm just a regular guy. I got like 20,000 followers. He did a duet. My clip got a million views within, I don't know, four or five hours. So that really showed me. Like, I've seen it when you guys post something or retweet. Or <laughs> like, holy fuck, this is for real. Yeah, dude, there's, um, that's why I, I don't think people, um, necessarily in the business world, uh, fully understand it. So, um, you know, it's a lot easier than a kid asking me cause a kid's like, Oh shit. Like there's no way like he would even think about doing that. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting bridge to, you know, cross and kind of, you know, bridge together, honestly between social media and business and Gen Z and um, the adults that run the investing and all the companies. So. Hey, congrats on your final today. So what you saw you post what? 97. Yeah, I got a 99 on it today. Oh, my bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to yeah. change you two points. All right. I, um, I have not really slept that much and I, I took a nap ish. I would say it's a mid tier, like between nap and sleep, but it was just my sleep schedule was so off. So <laughs> it's pretty well, thanks, brutal. Thanks for waking up to do this. So why, why are you even bothering with school? I mean, if I was you, I would just be focusing on who I want to date next. I wouldn't think about school right. or anything else. I'd just be like, where's the next party <laughs> at? I mean, for you guys, I mean, you have a good head on your shoulders. I mean, but why go to school? You're making a ton of money now. What's what's the point? Um, for me, like first off, school is just um, something that I've always like wanted to accomplish because um, I'll be like the, literally the first one in my family to go to like actual college and get my degree, like a four year degree. Um, my mom went and um, finished up in nursing school and uh, just did that in the past four years, but. I sort of count it, sort of don't. So that's one part of it. Um, also, it's like I'm really passionate about people getting an education. And I feel like a lot of people, when I started this whole social media thing, it was because of school and me being an educated person and showing people that education can kind of, you know, it's cool. And I just never wanted to let those people down. And then a little bit has to do with my own self being just, you know, stubborn as shit and wanting to finish what I started. So that's the short answer. There's a lot of different reasons, but um, eventually I want to be able to also use what I've learned and teach other kids about how they can um, learn the basics of investing in business and basically how they can grow something off the internet and make it into you know a platform at least where they can make a good income every month you know i saw you post yesterday too it was so funny like hey you see me investing in all these cool companies but you know if you can't do that save 20 percent of you know what your grandma gave you 20 percent of your allowance and stash that yeah. away. it's a good message it's not sexy right um that's what I, I, I basically, so I tweeted all my investments. I'm super excited about it. I love it. But I'm not one of those people that doesn't understand that not everyone has money. I literally grew up, I tweeted about it. I've, I worked in factories um, one year with my dad and then two years in a steel mill. And like I started detasseling, which is like with corn um, and working on farms and cleaning pig pens and stuff whenever I was like literally 12 years old. So. I know what it means to fight for your money and not have much money. Um, in fact, my dad's, my dad's literally, you know, a legend, his truck growing up, uh, we called it Whitey had like 300,000 miles on it. The whole entire, like underneath and sides of the truck was rusted out. 
Um, his his front end was literally uh, bungee corded, so he could turn like no reverse for a while, like crazy stuff. So I know all about what it means, and I just wanted to let those people know: a that I understand, b that I started there and worked my way up with obviously a lot of luck, but determination and um, c like if you don't have that, if you're not 18 and you can't invest or you don't have money to invest, just save it up. Yeah. Everyone, you know, can either find a way to make money if they really want to, or gets a little bit of money here and there, might not have a lot, but blows it on stupid stuff like candy bars and Pizza Hut. Like, you know, so anyone can find a way to make a little bit of money and also save a little bit of money. What's your dad do? So my dad, he, um, he works at a company called Cargill and it's just a corn mill helps make like everything for Kellogg's and macaroni and all kinds of anything to do with like corn and flour and all that stuff. So, um, and basically his job is, uh, walk around a really loud, um, (laughs) factory that no one should have to go through every day. And he's had all kinds of jobs, but like within the company, I think he's been there for like 16 years and never had a sick day or something like that. Wow. Uh, You come from that Midwest hard work and get up early kind of thing. Yeah, man. Like I always tell my dad, I'm jealous of his work ethic. And he said, you know, you can work half as hard as me and still get 10 (laughs) times far. So, uh, yeah, he. Uh, I'm jealous of how many hours he's he can put in at one time and keep going. So, well, dude, I mean, you're not blowing yourself up, but I I know you a little bit now, and I kind of know your schedule, and it's insane. You've got an incredible work ethic. That's what I want to <laughs> talk to you about too. Is so you've got three podcasts, you've got YouTube, you've got TikTok. You got to churn out every single day. Um, social media shit, you know what I mean? You got to make sure your Instagram posts and all that. Then you've got school and then you want to hang out too. You're 21. You want to hang out with your friends and yeah. how do I you mean, manage it all? Like how, how much are you working? You know, that's, um, you named a little bit of, you know, obviously what I do and some of the big parts, um, you know, obviously you got like the gaming team and sometimes I, I've, I've been making some music on the side that I got coming out. Nice. The list goes on and on, but, um, the real answer is I used to think that I was doing a lot with just my TikTok and my socials and didn't really do anything else. And, uh, you know, Michael pretty much like not forced me, but said, listen, you're either going to have to create a calendar and work off of a real calendar or it's never going to work. So the day that I created a calendar, um, I was able to organize everything I do obviously there was a lot of struggles with like learning how to get off a call at the time I say I am. So like my schedule sometimes is booked and it'll be like, you know, 10 o'clock, 10 30, 11, 11 30, 30 minute gap to eat lunch, 12, 12 30. Like, like that, that's just kind of how it goes. Um, so, you know, it, I, I made it kind of a game for me and I made it to where I could see, um, kind of like what I needed to do and obviously made like mood boards of where I want to be or tasks that, um, whoa, whoa. talk about mood boards. So you like put a bunch of shit on a board, like where you want to be, the car you want to have, the house. All so, that yeah. So, um, people can say I'm crazy for this, but I always tweet. Um, I've manifested a lot of things off of just Twitter and like thoughts I have in my head and I'll say it out loud. And I would say I'm 90% of the things that I've said that are realistic um, have happened just because once I put it out there, I, I don't really give myself another option. So um, mood boards, you know, are really effective for me. Uh, have you heard of Trello? Yeah. Yeah. I use that. I have it shared with Michael and he can go in there too. And just working on that and laying out everything. It's just, organization is key. And I think Bethany Frankel told us all about that. And Miles even mentioned it. So, you know, um, he, he said kind of what you were just talking about. We interviewed Miles yesterday. And what was he saying that 
saying something out loud, like saying a goal out loud is 10 times more effective than just thinking it. And I, I believe that too. Cause you're I believe it. putting it in the world. I mean, you have to be careful. I've made in my past uh, some big bets <laughs> and promises that I said were going to happen. And uh, I think they will happen, some of them, but it's going to be like one of those five to 10 year things. <laughs> so you just got to be careful with it and give yourself like hard, but actually realistic goals. You know, yeah. you, you seem for an influencer, at least a pretty wholesome dude. You know what I mean? I mean, you're, you've got a good message to kids, you know, go to school, education, be smart about finances. <laughs> Yet I see you all the time in the, in the like drama pages. So I don't understand. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> like, you don't seem like a bad guy. Like, how do you keep, how do they keep, you know, reporting on you? Bad shit. <sighs> To be, um, and I, I want to say this in the most humble way, either, or I guess there's two ways to it. Either A, I'm just not funny, or B, there's only like a select group, I think, of, you know, kids in the TikTok space that are logical and intelligent enough to pick up on a lot of my sarcasm. Um, sometimes I forget that people might not be able to comprehend things the way that I see it when I say it. So like I'll be sarcastic about something on, and tweet it out and people will think that I'm 100% serious. It's like, you know, the other day with Lil Yachty, I tweeted and was like, Oh gee, TikTok room canceled you, bro. Like not coming back from that one. You're canceled, dude. You might as well give up. <laughs> and obviously I was just trolling. Um, and it got me on all the T pages and people were making videos and blah, 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 blah. Like, obviously I'm joking. I could care less. So I, I have fun with it though. Um, you gotta be a little bit spicy or else people will get bored anyways. Yeah. I learned that I've, I had my moment where I went completely like problematic, like nothing. And I could easily do that now, but first off it's boring for me. Cause then you just watch everything from the outside. Like, you know, um, <laughs> you want to be in the I, mix. I, yeah. I just want to be in the mix and, you know, stay cool and stay, stay uh, hip. But uh, I don't know. I think anyone that actually follows me kind of gets the gist that I've been through it, man. And I'm just trying to, you know, take what I was and pivot out and become something that can influence people where they can learn from my mistakes. And, um, you know, I like, I like it because a lot of us in sway, our mistakes and our pivot is so visual that it can actually inspire people. Um, cause we never hit anything and obviously it was super public. So it, um, it's a double edged sword. Well, you, you know, know, that's what I was going to say. So if you go the kind of clean way, Hey, I'm not in a beef with anybody. I'm not tweeting little Yachty. You know, I'm just right. minding my own business. People kind of forget about you. So that's bad. And then I was going to ask you too about Dixie. I'm not getting into Dixie, but all the drama there, which went on for a long time, is, was almost good for you in a way because you're out there. And I wanted to ask you too, <laughs> what did your following do during that period? I'm guessing it grew. Did it? No. I don't know. Uh, you know, I've had a really, really, really tough time on uh, the internet. I think I'm the only one that every time I get in a controversy, I lose followers. Oh, wow. I thought you would So, gain. like, no, I, um, everyone that says that, that, like, they gain followers is honestly usually right. And a lot of people, I feel like when bad things happen, they just absolutely blow up. But, um, for me, my issue was, is my identity. And, um, this is completely like, I, um, you know, Dixie and I are friends. I'm, I'm happy for her and Noah. Um, and I'm thankful that something that wasn't, you know, life changing or completely career ending or like, you know, I didn't do anything like crazy to get me canceled, um, happened. So I'm happy for the, the learning experience. And, one thing that I saw was, is whenever I was dating her, instead of, um, you know, hanging out with my friends and building up my 
own <clears throat> identity as a person and a creator, I was kind of just like, oh, you know, I'm going to, you know, whatever today. I'll post with Dixie. It'll get it 10 million views um, this week. And then for the rest of the week, like, I'll just chill out. Um, yeah, you, almost become, of, you almost become, you're Dixie's boyfriend. You're not, you're not Griffin. Correct. In a, in a sense. I mean, I had sway and like, oh, I, yeah. was, I was in the space for a while, but like, I wasn't differentiating myself um for sure so basically whenever we um you know everything went down we broke up it was like a lot of my following was because i was dixie's boyfriend in that relationship um not because i was griffin johnson and i think that's why i lost followers because they were so invested into that and um it really caused me to pivot I was down, man. Like I was in like 800 realistically, probably like six or 700 K a post on Instagram. Um, after the breakup went all the way down to like 200 K two twenty. Wow. That big a drop off. Wow. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I was pretty scared. I'm like, shit, I'm, I'm over. Like, this is it. This is my career. Like obviously 220 K is good, but like nothing, it's not anything like, really juiced and i thought i was done for um and instead <clears throat> you know obviously i have the boys here that help me stay motivated which i'm thankful for but it created it caused me to pivot out and kind of figure out who i am as a person and get all of that laid out and i think on the internet i'm not there or even close to where i want to be but people have recognized that lately and i mean my numbers are I'm really impressed with how much I've been able to dig myself out and show people, you know, who I really am. And also that I'm trying to teach them how to be actually successful and, um, learn from my, I want them to learn from me. So you gave me, and it ties in, you gave me great advice too. I was asking you, you know, how do I grow my, my Instagram game is so fucking <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. I'm not even getting my handle because you probably won't follow me. So, but I kind of asked Griffin, Hey, you know, can you help me grow it or maybe tag me to post or something? And you said, just like your, you went through is you want your own followers. You don't want Griffin Johnson followers coming over and follow just because Griffin said the same right. thing with you, right? A lot of those followers weren't Griffin Johnson followers. They were Dixie followers and you want, people to follow you you don't want them coming from somewhere else because they can easily go like they did with you yeah i saw a comment to a couple of them under yours it was like that's the most basic advice i've ever heard i saw that uh, and i i do agree that it seems very basic but everyone misses the concept you know whoa, growing whoa, a social whoa, hold on the post was because if people probably didn't see it was you said don't worry about followers, worry about posting consistent content. Yeah. And that's a simpler term and message for find something you're passionate about, find what you love. And if you truly love it and you're always posting and you build that portfolio and you build depth, whenever you do bring those eyeballs to your work, people can see that it's very authentic. Like whenever you go to read my tweets, I write that shit from my heart. Like, and I truly, truly mean it. And I want to help people like, and you know, I still get people who's like, Oh, he's just doing it for like this. Or he's just doing it for that. But I'm so consistent with it. I do it every single day and I don't even think about it. And I was going through my Twitter. I'm like, man, you know, like I've really changed. Like if you go back to my Twitter, it was like, babe, please tell me you'll kiss me. And like shit like that. <laughs> um, Show me just your like, toes. <laughs> yeah, like just pointless, stupid tweets that like got a lot of likes but didn't really mean anything. Yeah. And I was like, I can get a hundred thousand likes a tweet, but what is it getting me? It's getting me nowhere. So, you know, I cut down. I started posting things that I was passionate about and teaching people. And I use my Twitter for that. Um, obviously you see my stuff. But and the amount of engagement and conversion and, um, you know, fan base that I built on Twitter, I literally, if you see, I have a whole, um, you know, society and family, I feel like on there. And, you know, 
I was trying to tell you that would you rather have a hundred thousand followers or a thousand fans? A thousand fans. Of course, dude. Um, so that's what I mean whenever I say just be true to who you are, stay consistent. And those people that follow you will follow you j- only because of you. And yep. unless you really mess that up, you can't, you can't take that away. You know, dude, that's, that's insane advice. This interview may be boring and, Griffin Johnson fans out there, I'm sorry if you wanted me to talk about toes and Dixie, <laughs> you know. But yeah, you can, uh, you can like chop it in, right? You can we'll edit it in it. and move it. Yeah. Okay, we'll, get you, we'll get some good TikToks out of this. Actually, I do have one Dixie question for you before we move on. Isn't it weird your ex dating a friend and do you see her at the houses and stuff? Isn't that strange? Yeah. <laughs> um, at first, for sure, um, just with the whole situation and – um, I felt like all of us, you know, could have handled things better, um, for sure. So I think the awkwardness for me, was like, you know, Dixie and I are both very stubborn. Um, and we were friends before we even like started talking or dating or anything. So, I mean, it's been a year now, I, I mean, over a year, I think. And, um, you know, we, we were friends since basically the first time she'd come to LA for social media and all that, like she's one of my day ones. And I think the most awkward thing for us was like deep down wanting it to be over, but um, both of us just being too sober to do anything about it. And that's just how we are. And I knew it was going to, you know, be like that until one of us folded and I knew that was going to have to be me. So um, yeah, I, I'm glad now, like I said, I've, I've learned so much from it. Um, and I truly like see your music. I'm, I've always been like a supporter, even like through all of it. And I know it sounds probably like this kid's full of crap. Um, you know, I went through my own mental like issues and getting uh, through being the most hated kid on the internet and trying to find my career and being, being scared really. Um, you know, I didn't really have any friends because I kind of neglected them. Um, by being a simp and uh when on top of that i uh i didn't really have a identity so on top of being the most hated kid on the internet getting roasted by everyone people from my hometown asking my mom and like that embarrassment wow uh, which was the worst part like forget the trolls on the internet that was like you know my mom had to hear about it from people and it was just really 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 embarrassing um who would they say to your mom were they like dixie fans are saying like hey your son's a piece of shit or <laughs> no it'd be like they'd like just ask my mom and be like yo is like griffin okay like i heard he like cheated and all this like Jesus. you know it's like as a mother um you know he's not trying to hear yeah it's obviously disappointing and like i was disappointed um in myself about everything that went down and um you know, my mom knew it wasn't me and I kind of had to have like a sit down and my mom's like, you know, I've been in just like this weird, dark thing with Sway. And like, I wouldn't say that actually yeah, I would, I turned into quite a douchebag for a while. Um, and it just sucks that like a lot of the people I cared about the most in that time kind of got screwed over and uh, put me in a really weird and tough situation afterwards. So uh, um, to answer your question, sorry, I kind of got off track, but. No, this is what um, people want to hear. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, definitely awkward at first just because like, it's like, what the, you know, like where did this come from, you know? Um, and, but now I would say 100% no, like um, it doesn't bother me at all every time. Like, I see either like see them. I'm Noah and I are friends. We talk anytime. Uh, we chill at the house and stuff. And anytime I see Dixie, it's like you know friendly. So, um, yeah, it's um, it's good. I don't really think about it anymore. I just I want it to be over. I'm tired of um, you know people all over the internet are profiting off of my misery, her misery, our mistakes, and like just like, who, like the T pages and stuff. You mean? Um, yeah, T pages or like interviews or like, you know, everyone it's, and always, it's been like five months, you know, and everyone, um, it's different for people that like, 
I want to talk to and like are my friends and like I feel comfortable and it's like different. But like I see random people every single day that still talk about it and make, you know, they they profit off of it. And it's like that was a lot of my suffering, man. Like that was the most mentally challenging thing that I've ever been through in my entire life. And you guys are treating it like I don't care or it was nothing. And, um, I did not, I did not, um, take it lightly. I, my personality made it seem like I was on the internet. Cause I was like, ah, oh, I'm fine guys. Like letting my ego, you know, get the best of me and kind of like brush it off. Like, you know, make jokes and just be a douche really. Like I didn't think of it like that. And I, I wish people could understand that it was me not knowing what to do. I'm, you know, a 21 year old kid that has yeah. never done social media. I didn't even know anyone. I didn't even know. I barely knew who even David Dobrik was whenever I started. I did not watch YouTube how at did, all. How did you start? So you're in Illinois. You're a kid. Did you start in high school? What, I mean, how did you don't dance? No, like no, no, no. I started as a um, sophomore second semester of college. Oh, wow. I didn't even have a Twitter that I used. Like, nothing. I, I barely used it at all. Um, so what were you talking, two years ago? Um, yeah. Two years ago, you went from not having a Twitter account to where you are now? Yep, no lie. Um, and honestly, I didn't even take TikTok really that serious until a year and a half ago, probably. Um, so what yeah, you, it's, what were you posting in the beginning? Like what kind of stuff? Like what? A lot of nursing what, content. Who the fuck wants to watch nursing content? That's really what you were posting? And yeah. Um, you know, just being in class and all of that stuff, people, I think, I think it's more of a fantasy thing, like a male nurse and, you know, kind of the shows and the story and, you know, Grey's Anatomy, um, all of that stuff. So, got it. Um, I think that's kind of the, the vision that was behind all of it. And it just went from there, man. And I really didn't even know about, I didn't even know what MagCon was. Um, didn't know any of the people besides Sean Mendez. And, uh, I came completely dumbfounded. Honestly, I didn't even know about that world at all. I, I was in my own Midwest bubble. Um, and I don't remember people growing up talking about, uh, MagCon or any of that stuff. Like it wasn't a thing wasn't where a I'm, thing. like people barely even had Vine. I never had a Vine. Um, I remember one of my friends did, but like we didn't do that stuff. We'd go out and play, and like we always were playing sports and stuff. Like I don't remember any of that. So just different culture. So you were doing the fact that you're good looking and <laughs> you know doesn't hurt things. So you're kind of doing this nursing you know the guy that these girls want kind of thing <laughs> and then how like how big did you get while you're a sophomore like was it slow did you see like growth quickly well the platform wasn't anything like it was now like the biggest creator at the time was probably elmo um if you remember him mm -hmm. um he still does a lot and still gets engagement honestly i'm really impressed with him um, one of my very first friends ever, he kind of brought me in. I think he had like 2.3 million followers and like 600,000 Instagram followers. And he had got that in like a couple, like two months. Wow. Um, and he was the biggest creator, like hands down. Uh, there was old musically people and stuff, but like the hot upcoming, you know, new thing, he was like the shit. And that was, I think, yeah, 2.3 million. And that was like big time on the platform. Um, and I remember I posted a video, uh, it was me and, um, a puppy and it was like, I just flipped the switch and it was like, you know, I went for, it went from just me to like flipping the switch and I had like this puppy and I changed outfits and I woke up the next day and I had like 23,000 followers and like the video had like 400,000 or no, not 400. See, back then, the top amount of likes you really could get was like three or 400,000. So I think it was like 320,000, which was like viral on TikTok. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, I had like 23,000. 
followers. The ratio I I remember also of growing per video was much higher back then because the there wasn't as much saturation. So, you know, I remember back in the day, if you got a video with a hundred thousand likes, then you would, uh, you would gain about 15,000 followers every time, wow. 10 to 15,000, especially as a new creator, people seeing your face and getting that hype and stuff. And I started that in like January. And then by that March, I think I had like 104,000 followers by the time I got to playlist. Um, which was equivalent now to probably 1.4 million on okay. TikTok. <clears throat> so I wasn't huge, but definitely had a little bit of a decent following. And I remember going there with my friend, Chris Biddle, and uh, he's he just got into law school. He started the journey with me, kind of convinced me to even do TikTok. He's a visionary, um, and I can never think of enough. He took that journey with me to – meet a bunch of internet e-boy kids and like that was the first time you know i saw so much culture like dudes painting their fingernails and like i was mind blown you know i came from college like like you know fraternity like you know playing baseball and stuff like i was you know just got done uh throwing some hay bales and chilling with the boys so i had no idea what was going on like the fashion the chains on people's jeans i I mean i just remember i'm like what the fuck am i doing here like (laughs) what is this and uh he trooped it out with me and i got asked to go on the lights out tour and it just went on from there what did you what did the fam and your friends think you know what did the guys who were bailing hay after school i think of this you know my friend griffin is going to playlists like what do they even think of it well you'd be surprised actually um I really figured out who my true friends were during that process because my best friends, my very, very best friends that were closest to me and grew up with me, I figured they'd be the ones to shun me and they weren't. I still have like, I I would say I have three close friends from home and it was the three that I figured would get on my ass the most. They supported me completely. Um, Everyone else, like my, my buddies in the group, uh, a lot of them, you know, whenever I started, I was hustling to do anything because I saw the money and potential there um, before, obviously, most of the rest of the world did. So I was trying to explain to people my vision and no one was getting it. They just, you know, I did something that uh, there's like 10 of us in the world that ever did it. So um, they just didn't understand and they would literally humiliate me because, you know, and as humble as possible, but on my campus, I was, I was without being famous in my own little world. I was pretty famous, um, in my community, in the state, like in the state and the local area and surrounding counties and stuff. Like, you know, a lot of people knew who I was and I had a crazy network, honestly, for just being where I lived and the amount of uh, resources I had. So dude, like so many so many people were just making fun of me, sending my videos around, like humiliating me and like, you know, showing it to girls and they would all laugh and make fun of me. And they'd be like, Oh, Griffin, you know, like it it was humiliating for a while. And I'm so happy it happened because a, I found my true friends, like the most hillbilly country boys, (laughs) like just some good old boys that I'm friends with. You would think would be shunning me. They didn't even give a shit. They're like, yo, man, do what you got to do. Um, get out of this town and do something with yourself. So I uh, I have a really good buddy, Campbell, and I don't think I've mentioned him in an interview before, but it's one of my OG friends. And uh, one of my goals is I, I told him when I started this that I was going to get to a point where I could retire and we could own our own fishing charter. <laughs> um, you could probably so, do that now. I mean, you could do the fishing charter. I don't know about yeah. retirement yet. Yeah, uh, I could, but I want to get to a point where my only worry in the world is just going out with my friend and being out somewhere that I love to be where it's warm and do what I love to do. So um, crazy journey really humbled me um, in that aspect because in my own bubble, I thought I was the shit. Lost pretty much all my friends. This is a trend for me, by the way. Um, (laughs) I see you 
losing friends at various points of your life. Yeah, I, I, um, I think it's because uh, there's, a, there's a deeper meaning. I just don't know it yet. I don't think it's the first time or the last time. It's, a, like, it's not going to be the last time. I wish it would be, but it probably won't. And it uh, seems like I always just get myself in these cra- – it's either A, a crazy vision that I have that no one else can see, um, or B, it's because um, I get so zoned in to something that I'm passionate about here and there. And block or, everything out. Yeah, it's like I have like laser focus sometimes on the wrong things. Um, so I'm working on that. It's just really hard for me. So Look, I, you mentioned going over and keeping – you know, time and you've got a tight schedule. I'm looking, we got like 13 minutes left. I want yeah, to get, let's I get want some to, juicy stuff so you can, you know, uh, entertain your audience. And Well, we'll get it. to that. But I want to talk um, about everything you've got going on. So let's talk podcasts first, right? You've got three podcasts going on right now. Talk about those. Yeah, so I have my first one that I started with, Bob Minery. Um, just an entertainment podcast, shooting the shit, having fun. I have Swayway where I just sit down. I wanted to give all the boys an opportunity to organically promote whatever they're working on every week, get them in there, tell their stories so people can really get a personal feel for that. Um, I'm really excited about that one. I love doing Swayway. Um, and then uh, I obviously have Brand Aid with you where we're talking about marketing. Obviously doesn't convert really well with people yet. Um, working on that, teaching people. Yes. You know, and marketing and investing and all of that it can be um, honestly just like I said um, sexy like making it cool and fun for people and making it almost a competition I, I want to make like a very friendly subtle competition between like my fan base of whether they're like calling people out like did you invest are you saving your money and they're like well you know like I, I, I don't want them to obviously be a parent but have that you know friendly competition so it's good. It's fun. What about gaming? So it seems like everybody's in gaming. Is there a ton of money? I'm not a gamer, so I don't know. But is there a ton of money um, in gaming? Like, why is everybody into it? Yeah, so gaming is obviously going to revolutionize into an actual, um, you know, professional sport. Esports is getting absolutely huge. It's going to eventually, I think, take over. Um, I see the vision for it. I see how many alternatives there is like, you know, it's going to get to a point where video games are so realistic. You could turn on a video game of people that don't have to go out and actually get hurt. And, you know, it's going to look like the same thing as if it was a real game. You're, you're going to be playing, but it just won't be physical. Right. Um, but yeah, that's long ways down the road. But in terms, I'm so into esports because it's a dream of a lot of people. It's a very competitive market. And, I had the opportunity to invest in a company and, um, you know, help them build something to where I get a chance to, you know, get eyeballs onto kids that, you know, have a lot of opportunities and, you know, could be potentially something big, but just never have that extra push. Um, and, uh, one of my friends, Carson is what really got me into gaming. I, I knew it was a thing and I knew a lot of people with phase and all that. They always wanted to get in. Um, but he, he had a um, vision whenever he was younger of, you know, being on gaming teams and doing all of that. And, uh, basically he got shut down and long story short, he kind of gave it up. And I, it was, he was one of those friends that was always there for me. So I made it whenever this popped up, I made it my mission that I was going to find a way to make sure that I at least got his foot in the door to set him up for life and give him that opportunity where he could do what he loves and I could, and it kind of helped me see that for everyone else too. That's really cool to be able to have kind of that power to do that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very, very grateful for that. And um, hopefully I get to change a lot of people's lives like that. Just not even my friends, but just people that, um, you know, don't get the opportunities. And then let's talk investing too. Um, you and Josh, I mean, there's, I don't know what you guys are doing, but you're running around like buying companies, founding companies, being advisors to companies, like hit some of the highlights. Uh, you, we can't talk about everyone. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, there's, there's, uh, I think there's like eight or nine now. Um, one thing I want to say is people think that we're just, you know, throwing money in random things. And uh, it's definitely not true. We we're fortunate enough to be in with the right people. And we have mentors like, um, you know, Corey Levy and others that give us really, really good cap tables and like the best and coolest upcoming founders. And um, yeah, we just, we started investing and Michael got us into that. And obviously it's about, we all collab and talk about things that we're passionate about or things that we see um, have really great founders that we believe in, um, et cetera. There's so many things to base an investment off of, but it's been super fun. Um, obviously I didn't know a whole lot about investing in money management and doing all of that. And I feel like financial literacy isn't really spoken about properly in schools. So I kind of made it my mission because I saw how many opportunities I was missing out on easy opportunities like a Roth IRA. Most people don't even know what that is. Hmm. And like you're able to, you know, put in money every year at compounds and you could be, you know, have a couple million dollars shown in your bank for when you retire. It's like, how do you not know about, like, how is that yeah. not preached in school? It's like, it literally blows my mind. You're going to teach me how to put the alphabet into math, but you're not going to teach me how to set myself up with a proper retirement. It's like, I don't know. I think it's a government system thing where they do it on purpose, but, um, well, the connections you guys are making, I mean, we're interviewing tomorrow, Tyler Winklevoss. Yeah. Fucking yeah. Facebook Bitcoin billionaire. I mean, the fact that you know, all these guys is pretty insane. Um, yeah, it's just about, you know, using our youth, obviously to our advantage, using our following, um, helps a lot in leveraging into these calls. But, you know, most importantly, it's just, proving yourself and being consistent. Like I said, um, we've been very consistent. We never just, it's not like we just throw money in also into companies and say, toodles, like, thanks for letting us put our money in. Um, so yeah, it's like, we actually work with the companies. We made a name and rep for ourselves. People saw what we were doing. They're like, whoa, these kids are like, they're balling over here. Um, and it just ended up snowballing and just being a man of your word and going above and beyond every time. You know, before we get, and I think it's great what you guys are doing, before we get to fan questions, I want to talk about your dating life a little bit, man. I mean, you know, we, yeah. we got all the promotional shit out of the way. We told the rise of Griffin Johnson. We covered all that. But I got a couple questions for you. Um, I saw you out with Kelly Osborne a month ago. You guys yeah. went out a couple of times. And I thought that was odd. Not that there's anything wrong with Kelly Osborne, just the age gap. I thought it was weird, but I thought about it. This is what I think about, man. I was thinking about it, and I remember you said when I interviewed you guys together, you said Jennifer Aniston was like the your girl. <laughs> so, do you have like a thing for older chicks, or like what's your older women? I should say. Do you have um, a type? Like, what's your thing? Uh, I I don't think I've really ever had a type. I've I've dated a blonde, like blondes. I've dated, um, you know, Dixie has black hair. Uh, my girlfriend, my, one of my first girlfriends, Brown, it's like, it always just mixes. It's like, I don't, I kind of am weird on that. It's like, I don't, I don't really have a type in that way. Um, but I would say, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think I even have a thing for older women. I think that, um, if someone's hot to me, they're hot. Like, I, I, it's just weird. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Kelly, she's, she's great. We, we talk um, often. And, um, you know, she, I help her anytime I can and vice versa. She's great. I'm, I'm glad that I have her, um, you know, on my team and, you know, we're great friends and, uh, I have a lot of fun with Kelly, man. Like Kelly also, I feel like understands sway a lot because, you know, she had a dark past and she pivoted out of it, um, very well. Um, super cool. And I, I mean, I think we just relate on that level where people judge us sometimes and we've made a difference. And now we're trying to prove that point that we're someone, someone else. Is there more than friends or are you guys just friends? I mean, it's a big, no, 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 we're just friends. Um, I know it kills a lot of the buzz, but, uh, yeah, Kelly and I, we're honestly great friends. Um, and I'm very thankful to have her for that. So what about you're a good looking guy, you have money, you're famous, you're 21, you're in LA. 
I mean, where you can have anything you want. Are you <laughs> dating and what's going on? Um, to be completely honest with you, um, I'm still not really over the whole like situation, not in the fact that like the feelings thing, it's more like I'm scared. Uh, I, uh, I kind of talk, uh, Jason Kennedy, um, the host for E, he's a really big mentor of mine. And, uh, you know, he checks in on me a lot cause I, he kind of keeps me grounded with not checking my DMS anymore or giving out my Snapchat. And, um, obviously I'm, I'm single. I can talk to whoever I want, but, uh, I'm scarred, man. Like it's really hard for me, dude. Like I go through my DMS and like the whole time I just have anxiety and I'm like, what does this girl want from me? Is she going to expose me? Like, not even like I say anything bad. I mean, I'm just going to be straight up. I'm, I'm a laid back, pretty wholesome, you know, just having a good time and being a kid kind of dude. I, you know, I'm not a, one of those weirdos that you see getting exposed all the time on TikTok. I've been in this for two years. And I mean, I think everyone knows I, I'm not on that weird shit. So it just sucks, and I'm always scared uh, that someone's just going to, you know, not even scared that I'm going to get, like, exposed to something bad. It's just, like, I'm scared that I'm going to catch feelings for a girl that ends up exposing me or, like, I'm like, man, I really like this girl, and then she screws me over. It's, like, mentally I'm just I – can't, I can't have a relationship even if I wanted to. So how do you not, I mean, you know, you're the guy in Illinois watching this right now is going, wow, poor Griffin. He has hot girls DMing him, you know? Oh, for sure. My friends give me shit all the time. Come on. This is the best problem ever to have. Yeah. There's this girl, like I was on COD the other day and um, like I went, I always check my like top requests, like the top to see like verified accounts or like businesses that have DM me or whoever. And one of the top ones was like a girl with like her ass as her profile picture. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, dude, it's, it's so old. Always seeing these girls like DM me with their ass as a profile picture and like ask me to wife them up. <laughs> and guys are like, yep. Can't say I've ever had that problem. <laughs> no. Sounds like a problem, man. No, it uh, sounds like a good thing. Yeah. So um, it does get old though. Not going to lie, but yeah. Uh, for sure. I'm sure there's people that could listen to this and be like, yeah, shut up. Um, no one wants to hear your pity story of how girls are DMing you all day. So that's how I feel as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best. So going forward, who do you date? So you can't, it'd be fun to have some fun and just pick some DMS at random and, you know, hook up or, you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah. I mean, but I'm like, a- but there's a danger there because maybe she's just getting you for followers. Maybe she wants you to tag you and shit. Maybe she's going to tape something and, you know, give it the yeah. page. So you can't really I do mean, that. It's uh, the sad reality is, is like, of course I want to be 21. Of course I want to hang out with girls and do my thing and, um, you know, adventure around and, do, you know, do whatever I want, honestly. Um, it's hard being in my position and being a 21 year old dude. Like, of course, I just want to go out and party and, you know, hook up with a girl every once in a while and do my thing. But, like, for one, I'm I, relationships, it's almost impossible for me just mentally. And, two, it's like, you know, a girl like that, if they know you're successful, they can claim anything they want on you. And, of course, the guy, it's, like, guilty in, until proven innocent, basically. So, for me – um, it's just not worth it. And I try to keep myself out of ever being in that position. You know, the other thing too is I think I know the answer, but you wouldn't, I don't think you would date someone more famous than you again, because you don't want to be the boyfriend. No, I, uh, people think, um, you know, I know there's guys and stuff that have this thought, like if I just date a famous girl, like then I can just get the clout. No. No. Worst idea ever. Um, I'm actually worried for, about some of my friends. Um, you know, I hope things work out great for them. I don't see it ending in a good way, but I, I God, I, I, I pray that it does because oh, I know. Bryce and Addison? Um, I'm not going to lie. They, they've always been pretty good at keeping things private. They honestly, truly, um, you know, care about each other. I'm not worried. Um, 
I don't, I don't think, but like, um, there's a lot of kids in this space that, um, even if they're not exactly more famous, they're just like, if they're famous at all, like have that platform, it's always, you know, first off guys mess up a lot more. It's a lot easier for girls to stay on track. Um, and also it's, you know, they always take the girl's side first. So until you really can prove that she messed up, you're going to be in a world of hurt, man. So girls watching this, you're probably not going to get to Griffin. I hate to burst your bubble, but he's not going to read the DM. So I'm going to crush your dreams right now. It sounds like the only way to get to Griffin, you can't be more famous than him, but you got to be verified and you got to be kind of famous and in that world. So they'll understand. Is that what you're looking for, Griffin? I don't think it's even them being verified. I think it's the fact that the com- like being comfortable and knowing that they can't do something reckless because they also have a career on the line. Um, because not a lot of careers, it doesn't matter if you get exposed on the internet, you're not going to lose your job. But like a girl that is in social media and has that career and like um, has something to lose also, um, you know, it's definitely – and understands what I do on a daily basis because, like, my life is so crazy. Like, a normal person, would, I could try to explain, and they would n- never understand. Um, so, it's just – I'm in a really hard time in life, like, as far as having anything intimate, you know, goes. So, What do you think of Bryce and Addison? They're on, they're off, they're back again. The internet loves them and can't get enough. Um. I mean, I love them both dearly. I, def- you know, I always have their backs. Um, I think that they would be very good for each other if they weren't in the positions that they're in. I think it's super hard because they care about each other a lot. You know, they've both been through all of this together. Um, you know, we, I, I, I know a lot of people don't know this, but Sway was the one that, you know, started Addison on her social media journey. When I met her, I think she had 5,000 followers on Instagram. Wow. So like we brought her in and her and Bryce like had a thing even back then. Like that's why she ever got to LA. And um, I, like, I think I'm not really sure. Cause I flew in whenever she was there, but I think they knew something either way. I'll let them tell that story. But um, yeah, I think that they're very good for each other, but also it makes it really hard because of the positions in life that we're all in right now. So I wish them the best, and I honestly think they seem like the most uh, back-and-forth toxic relationship on the internet, but they're actually um, probably the strongest social media relationship I've seen. Oh, wow. Truly. Truly behind closed doors. Um, as far, The level of care and love they have for each other is definitely um, one of the strongest. It's not just for clout and to stay in the news. They're, that's a real deal. It's not a Jake Paul no. relationship. I mean, I'm pretty realistic, man. I've talked and been pretty straight up with you since day yeah. one yeah um no i it's definitely not for clout and fake you know yeah it's good of course, of course bryce probably loves his social blade right now but um i guarantee he's been there be- well before and um you know there's a lot of feelings before she even was addison ray yeah so well, dude, we're going over on time. I'm fucking up your busy day, but I got, let's just do some <laughs> questions real quick and we're, I'm done. Yeah. With you. All right. Best Michael Gruen story. Oh, people love these. Um, it's so hard for me because I've been with this guy every single day. Um, oh, man. I don't know. I, I said this the other day, and I think this is just one of my very favorite memories of Michael. And, uh, it was the day that we created this first TikTok, And the reason I say that is because it's so, it, it was so wild. He got so into it. It was completely out of his character. And, um, he's a really serious guy for the most part, like always working, always hustling. Like, um, obviously we hang out as just friends, but a lot of our times is work. So this is one of those moments. He doesn't usually flip a switch, um, where he goes from work to having fun like in the middle of a work day and i just remember for some odd reason he wanted to make a tiktok and uh, it was like the sound was like don't worry about me i'm a thug and he had like the virginity rock shorts ah. uh, white t-shirt tucked in like 
Um, just absolutely hysterical for him. And I just remember recording that. It was me, him, and Anthony. The video went absolutely viral. Um, and uh, now my, my fans will make edits of it and, like, do it in different, like, slow motion, like, don't worry about me, I'm a thug. And it's, like, really aesthetic, Michael, just, like, going through the dance. And uh, it's just it's just the whole setting of that. It, every time I see it, it cracks me up. And now they call it, they call it hashtag Groove Gang. I uh, know. I saw, I, I saw it for the first time yesterday. I'm a part of the Groove Gang. I yeah. love it. Groove Gang. So um, that's one of my favorites. The second thing. Why feet? I don't get it. Like, <laughs> I mean, hold on. That's, let me, uh, let me, that's so funny. Well, let me say, listen, if it's summertime and a girl's got sandals on and her feet are pedicured and looking <laughs> good, that means the rest, she's taking care of herself, right? The rest is going to be good. Yeah. Well, see, like, people get the wrong image. To be honest, it kind of started off as a joke. Um, but, like, on some real shit, if someone can take care, even girl or guy, if someone can take care of their feet and they're not disgusting, then you know that person cares about themselves. Like, if you take the time to actually take care of your feet, then you know for a fact that that person, they, they clean out their ears, you know, they trim their nails. Like, they're doing all that. They're flossing. Like, they take care of themselves, you know? Um, so that's basically what it is for me. It's not – it's not like a sexual thing. People always think that. And like, I kind of played into it because I want to make a brand out of it eventually. Cause I think it's so funny and so unique. Um, and it's like, it's just so funny. Cause people like, they literally think that I would rather see someone's foot than their ass. It's like, of course I would rather see a girl's ass than her like foot. Like what? <laughs> um, but they kind of missed the boat on what I meant. I said it in an interview one time. I just can't remember where. It ended up becoming a Twitter thing. Um, kind of made a joke out of it and a meme. And then, um, you know, I, I said it, like, multiple times. Like, instead of sin nudes, it'd be, like, sin toes. And it was funny. Um, and it was a joke I had on Twitter. And then, obviously, it blew up into a global thing way beyond my following reach that understood that it was, like, a joke. Um, so then I guess I just kind of got known as toe boy. So I, um, sometimes you just got to adopt it, dude. It could be a lot worse. And you come uh, out with socks maybe and kind of dude. Yeah. I want to do like sandals or socks or something. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about that for real. Cause it's funny. Toe ring. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't even see those things. Like do they even sell? I don't know. I, what do I know? Yeah. I don't really know, but um, yeah, just I'm just gonna play along with it to be honest. <laughs> Finally, I got, one, I got one more for you. What are the worst TikTok gossip pages? Who's always <laughs> fucking with you? Um, to be honest, I think all of them. Um, I've had my moments where I get really pissed because, you know, I think TikTok Room does a great job of keeping things updated. Uh, I think they've also fell off recently a lot on being active and people are getting annoyed. But um my favorite is TikTok Insiders and it's not because I hate TikTok Room. It's the fact that t TikTok Insiders whenever you're building a business, especially in the media company, it's always important that you keep that relationship with the creators um and kind of like get that inside scoop from them like for me, TikTok insiders will literally DM me and ask me about something and get the inside scoop on it. And I'll gladly tell them because they're, you know, they want to know my side of the story before they post something, um, kind of assess that. So for me, that's why it's my favorite. They, they also update some of the, like the good things, um, and kind of balance, balance it out as more of a news outlet than just, we're going to post all the drama, try to screw you over. And we know our, our comment section's toxic, but mm, we can't control it. We don't care. Like, well, good luck actually getting anywhere because, you know, someone like TikTok Insiders, I could see it being the next TMZ. Um, I like those guys. Yeah, uh, I could see it being the next, uh, the next TMZ because uh, they, they really are building those relationships with their, with their followers. And um, that's, that's how you scale. It's like, if someone came up to me and was like, Hey, should I work with TikTok room? And you know, I'm all of us, Josh and all of us are pretty involved in, uh, 
the business world, I would shut it down and be like, nope, toxic, you know? Um, so I, but they're also, I think they're younger girls and I never knew that. And when I found it out, I really Ooh, TikTok, TikTok insiders are run by younger girls. Uh, both of them, TikTok room and TikTok insiders. So whenever I found that out, I really toned it down. I figured it was some like 30 year old dude just being a douchebag. So yeah. there was a time for a while I was just going in on TikTok room. Um, and then I found out they were like young girls and I felt terrible. And I was like, not going to lie. What you're doing is still kind of fucked up, but I respect your hustle. So <laughs> I gave up on giving them shit. Um, I respect what they're doing and just, uh, I wish I could give them some tips on actually how to grow to be bigger than just what they are now. It's the same thing I do. I could be a dick and hammer guess about uncomfortable questions and try to just get a you know 30 second clip that'll blow up. But then no one would sit down with me again. You got to kind of, it's a delicate yeah. balance of like, you want to get some tea, but you don't want to piss the guests off and you don't want to make them look bad. So it's, it, it's not easy. You just got to be transparent and like, um, you know, I think you do a great job of it and you would be screwed if you pissed everyone off. Cause you're, you're not paparazzi. You don't chase people down. So I'm in my house. <laughs> yeah. So I think you do a great job of that. And like, obviously you built, you built a relationship with me to a point where you could ask me about anything and I, I would answer that. So, yeah. So just building those relationships is crucial, man. Like it gets in you so much, business. gets you so much farther. Fuck. Yeah. All right, I got one more. Um, what's it like having paparazzi follow you around? Is that a weird thing? Um, you know, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I respect them. I respect their grind. These guys spend their days um, trying to entertain people. And I know it's a little annoying and sometimes they cross the line. But, like, I think people need to understand that these dudes um, are very – like, they're kind of crucial for – um, just giving a little bit of the side of my life that I can't always give with the cameras being on me at all times. Not only that, but they're just trying to put food on their, on their tables, man. Like Corona's hard. A lot of people lost jobs. You see people that are trying to do paparazzi cause they see it working. Um, and they can't work. So I'm always nice to them. Um, sometimes I don't answer just because like, uh, I want to profit off of my own things. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think paparazzi is sometimes a little too much, crosses lines and can be annoying. But at the end of the day, I, I respect and understand them. Nice, brother. Well, I think we covered – I need you to stay on after to do an intro. But I think we covered everything. We covered the business. We covered bailing hay in Illinois. We covered yeah. your toe fetish. We talked about dick. <laughs> I mean, what else is there? Dude, I mean, the toe thing is definitely the big hitter for sure. Um, you know, <laughs> just can't get enough, dude. Uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, all my future stuff. Basically oh, you, all. actually, no. I'm going to be your PR guy. Talk about your upcoming show. Can you talk about that or no? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we didn't touch on that. So, um, I am working on a show. I, uh, I'm hoping for the beginning of the year, working on, you know, getting that sold out and getting everything finished up. And, uh, it's basically going to be a comedy show, a lot of react, like, uh, reaction style, um, clips and adding improv and making it adding on and making it funny and breaking it down and making a lot of like references kind of similar to, um, you know, family guy or something in that category. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm going into hosting. I told everyone I was going to be the biggest host, uh, in social media. So I'm working on that. And since I couldn't get a show booked from someone else, I said, screw it. I'm going to make my own and I'm going to make it better. So that's what where we're doing. Where are we going to see? Is it going to be a YouTube thing on a network? Like where is it going to be? Yeah. So I'm hoping, um, I don't know yet. Cause I, that's what I'm working on now is selling it out to that network. Um, maybe TV, but honestly, I'd rather do YouTube cause that's where I can actually make a difference. So we'll see. Nice man. Well, dude, I know you're busy. I woke you up from a nap. I appreciate I went over 16 minutes. We talked for like an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. I don't think I've, um, seen, I don't think I've seen a Griffin interview this long. 
yeah i uh i i can't say that i usually do them this long but um i'm glad that we could uh take this moment and talk um, you might want to cut it up it might be boring but you know i had a good time well i appreciate it man thanks hang on for a sec but thanks yep. you guys for watching please subscribe i got uh good ones coming up you don't want to miss them and make sure you check out the old videos too there's great ones with addison on there there's great ones i did bryce twice i did the hype house guys so check them out thanks